Behind me, 2007 Honda Pilot. We're gonna be replacing the inner and outer tie rods. Let's get started. First thing we wanna do is jack the vehicle up, put it on jack stands, and we'll pull our tire off. Now we wanna turn our steering wheel so we get better access to our tie rod. First, we'll start by breaking our lock nut. If this is still factory, it's a 19 millimeter. If it's on there real tight, you might need a hammer. There we go, got it loose. So we can just leave that there. If this doesn't come loose because we're replacing both inner and outer, we can cut this with a cutoff wheel, just in case you're struggling. Now let's pull off our tie rod nut. I find a pair of side cutters works best for these cotter pins. We'll just bend it, get it as straight as possible. There we go, try to knock it through. Sometimes these can be pretty corroded. And then if you have a little lip on the other side, let me see if I can show you even better. Try to do this one-handed. If you have the head exposed enough, you can get a bite with your pliers and just pull it through. There we go. Got it. If your tie rod is still factory, it'll be a 19 millimeter. Then we'll take a pickle fork, put it in between the tie rod and the knuckle, and then we'll hit on it with a hammer. There we go. That comes out. Now we're gonna unthread our outer tie rod from our inner tie rod. For that, we'll wanna count how many revolutions it takes for it to come off the inner tie rod stud. Let me move you just a little. So we're gonna count one, two, three, 16, 17, 18. I had 18 full revolutions. Now your revolutions may be different than mine, but we wanna remember that number. Our new tie rod will put on 18 revolutions. Now, if all you're doing is your outer tie rod, you can skip ahead and your new outer tie rod would just thread onto your old inner. But if you are moving ahead, we'll pull this nut off. Now mine comes off really easy by hand. If yours does not, what you can do with a deep socket is get on there with an impact and then hold it with a pair of vice grips. They give you a spot for a wrench. If that works, use a wrench, pair of vice grips, whatever you have, and you can buzz it off. Or if it does not come off again, cut it. Getting replaced. Now we wanna take off our bellows boot. There's a clamp here in the front. Let me get you a little closer. This with a pair of pliers, we'll take that clamp off. I found that these clamps don't always like to survive. So if yours breaks, that's okay. We can use a zip tie for installation, but this came off pretty good. There's one other clamp on the other side of the boot that we need to remove. Let me show you that. Hopefully you can see that, but on the bottom of this clamp, there's a little nub. You want to take a long screwdriver or a pry bar and push in on that nub and that'll pop this loose. They're not reusable, so we're intentionally trying to break it. I'm going to go in there with my long pry bar and hit on it. Do one more time. There we go. Let me pull it out and show you. There we go. And this is it. What we're hitting on is this nub right here. And that pops this loose and we can pull it out. We'll use a sturdy zip tie for installation. So now we can pull the boot off. Pull it off here in the front. Sometimes the boot will turn inside out. That's okay. We can turn it right side once it's off. Oh, this is coming off nice. Perfect. Now we can see our inner tie rod ball stud. Let me try to zoom you in. We have a lock washer that we need to unlock. You see this washer is bent over. We want to push it back and unlock it. Same thing straight across from it underneath. The washer is bent over. We want to push it back, unlock it, and then we can pull this off. Again, I'm just going to use my pry bar, get in there, unlock it. There we go. Do the same thing to the bottom. Perfect. If for whatever reason you are unable to unlock that washer, that's perfectly okay. When you go to take this off, it'll just require a little extra muscle to get past that lock washer. Our new one comes with a new lock washer, so no big deal. There are a few different styles of inner tie rod tools. This is the one that we're using. It's a universal tool. I find works really good on these. We'll just slide it over and we'll tighten it down. And we're just gonna get it good and snug. These don't have to be crazy tight, but just good, snug. And I have a long extension, put that here, and then my breaker bar on this end. Let me back you up. All right, let's break it loose. There we go. I can remove the tool. If needed, sometimes you have to reposition it at least once. I think we got it. Pull that off. We should be able to just spin the whole thing off. Perfect. And then here's our lock washer right here. All right, let's get our new one. Our new inner tie rod, we want to line up with the old one. Make sure they're the same size. And then make sure you have a new lock washer. It has little ears on it. That goes in. So we'll just put this on like that. And then those ears go in these little notches. So we'll just turn it, thread it on. Those ears to fall into place. There we go. Now we'll put our tool on. 
tighten it up. And the information I have says 65 foot pounds. Perfect. Now we'll loosen these. Now the small hammer, I'm gonna use the old outer tie rod. We just wanna lock that washer. There we go. Try to do this backside might be a little challenging. Perfect. Now you might get a little packet of grease that comes with your inner tie rod. For that, we're gonna put right here on the front, right where the ball is. We'll open this up. I'm gonna push this down, grease it up. There we go, spread it around. And I'm gonna push this up to the bottom. Grease it up, spread it around. Now you can go over to the side, side. Just make sure that it's greased everywhere. There, and then back to middle. Just wipe off any excess around it. Then we can put our boot on. There we go. Bring it all the way back. It should snap on the back. Perfect. Now I'll get my zip tie, put it on, and we'll tighten that down. Clip off any excess. Now we'll put this clamp on. Now if yours broke, just use a zip tie. There we go. We'll install our new jam nut. Let me back you up. We'll put on our new outer tie rod. And that was 18 full revolutions. One, two, three, 17, and 18. All right. Now we can put our tie rod back in the knuckle. This tie rod has a lock nut instead of a cotter pin. Put this on, snug it down. And this is torqued to 40 foot pounds. All right, and our jam nut is 33 foot pounds. You just have to guess what that is. There we go. Now you should take it to an alignment shop, get the alignment done anyway. They'll break this loose so they can adjust the alignment. And that's it. If you do have a cotter pin, you wanna put a cotter pin in. If you get to your 40 foot pounds and the hole on the nut does not match the hole on the stud to get a cotter pin in, then just tighten it to the next available hole. You don't wanna back it off to make it match up. You wanna tighten it just to the next available castle slot and then put your cotter pin in. That's all she wrote. All right, that's the repair. Just a word of caution, it may drive a little funny. Your steering wheel may be crooked until you get the alignment done. So I recommend going straight to the alignment as soon as possible. We'll have the parts and tools linked in the description. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, see you on the next one.